In the early 1900s, contraception was illegal in America. A woman's place was in the home, and effective methods of birth control were few and far between. A nurse named Margaret Sanger was working with struggling mothers, and she realized that women should be able to choose when they get pregnant and how many children they want to raise. In 1916, Sanger started the first birth control clinic in the United States. She felt that the best way to empower women would be to provide them with an easy-to-use, sure-fire oral contraceptive. And in 1942, her organization would become known as Planned Parenthood. It wasn't until the 1950s, when she met Gregory Pincus at a dinner party, that Sanger's dream started to become a reality. Pincus, an expert in mammalian reproduction, teamed up with feminist and heiress Catherine McCormick, and they enlisted fertility specialist John Rock. Pincus started to create what we now call the pill. Scientists knew that the hormone progesterone could stop ovulation. However, progesterone proved challenging to manufacture. Dr. Carl Gerasi, his colleague Dr. George Rosencrantz, and student Luis E. Miramontes synthesized one of the first progestins, which Pincus and Rock used during initial testing. But hormonal imbalances caused patients to experience serious side effects, and many quit taking the drug. The testing pool grew smaller, and obscenity laws at the time prevented advertising for volunteers. The pill was even tested on psychiatric patients to monitor long-term effects. Treatment moved to Puerto Rico in 1955, where female sterilization was legal, and contraception was favored as a means to stem population growth. Though women continued to report side effects, the experiments were proclaimed 100% effective. Finally, Sanger's wish had been achieved. The first birth control pill was released in 1957, but the drug wasn't approved for its intended use by the FDA until 1960. The pill's prevalence skyrocketed. By 1963, over 2.3 million women had sought prescriptions in the United States. However, those state obscenity laws and other regulations prevented women from easily accessing the pill, and it was mainly made available only to married couples. In 1972, a landmark Supreme Court ruling gave all women access to the pill. Research behind the tiny scientific miracle has spawned an entire industry, paving the way for Plan B, hormonal intrauterine devices, the patch, and the ring. Globally, contraceptive use has nearly doubled since the 1970s. As of this year, Washington, Oregon, and California now allow pharmacists to prescribe the pill over the counter. Several other states have proposed similar legislation. As Margaret Sanger had hoped, contraception gives women greater freedom over their life decisions. But this freedom can't be taken for granted. For example, 34% of Planned Parenthood services are related to birth control. Defending universal access to contraception is still a key element of protecting women's rights.